On December 31st, 2018, on a quick trip to Minneapolis for New Year's before heading back to Seattle, Anna and I met up with my friend Spencer for dinner at this place called Grand Cafe. In addition to having been on my radar for ages, Grand Cafe was recognized as one of Food & Wine's Restaurants of the Year in 2018. It actually got their Dish of the Year as the cover spot on their May issue, so I was insanely excited to eat there. The space inside has a really eclectic and hipster vibe housed inside of a 70-year-old restaurant. They seek to make things feel, quote, deeply genuine yet surreally dreamy. And don't get it twisted from the staff's goofy antics. You are immediately greeted with a warm Midwestern sense of hospitality and professional service. We went with two glasses of Tissot Cremant de Jura to start, at least Anna and I did. Spencer went with a ginger beer. First bites included a house-made lamb merguez glazed in piquillo pepper, black olive crumble, dates, and caramelized fennel. Whether or not this was an amuse or an extra dish, I'm not sure, but I'm a big fan of composed snacks like this. Really opens the door for more presentation when you don't have to worry about people picking it up. Their house-made sourdough with butter came next, just the right amount of tang without a crust that's going to tear your mouth to pieces. Plus, I really dig eating bread cut thick like this because I use a lot of butter. Without a doubt, one of my favorite dishes of 2018, porcini foie royale with parmesan cream. There's layers of this that satisfy any earthy, salty, or umami cravings that you brought to this restaurant, and one was absolutely enough for the three of us because it is incredibly rich and fatty. Super awesome presentation here as well with the uh, chicken foot. Next up, crispy sweetbreads. Blanquette sauce and Neo Brodini mushrooms. This is one of those three component dishes that sounds way too simple, but when it works, it works. Plus, the textures were on point here. Next to that, a Pomme's Paison with raw Hokkaido scallop on the top, a Subiz sauce, and dill. For me, the scallop got lost amongst all the other components, but I'm not one to rag on anything with crispy potato. Definitely recommend ordering this. Switching to red now, this is a Nebbiolo by De Rupi. It was light enough to pair with the rest of the meal, which was great. A slightly overdressed spinach salad with pickled onion, cracked hazelnuts, sunchoke chips, and a brown butter vinaigrette. No complaints other than the dressing quantity. It was a great vegetable break from some of the other protein-heavy snacks. And then, oh man, a near textbook perfect execution of a pike quenelle with poached langoustine, mushroom, and sauce nantua. If you've got any doubts that classic French cuisine is dead, this dish will quickly change your mind. It was spot on for texture, the sauce had tons of flavor, and the langoustine was truly cooked with tons of finesse. Main course time, we went with the roast chicken with sweet corn and braised bacon. There is a mousse between the skin and the breast. The sauce is a bacon agardu, and this is a corn supreme, which right off the bat was unfortunately cold, even though the flavor of it was great. The texture was also kind of strange, but on the side, we also ordered the carrots glazed in carrot butter and the poached leeks with sauce gribiche. The chicken texture and the flavor was great. It was not dry at all, and the mousse actually complemented instead of just kind of flexing. You can't really go wrong with corn and bacon, and the vegetable sides were exactly what you would expect. Carrots still had some tooth, but incredible flavor from that sweet and salty carrot butter, and the leeks were great, even though they were, at times, stringy to eat. After debating who had the bigger sweet tooth between Spencer and myself, we just decided to order several desserts. The first one from their savory sweets menu, a triple cream savory cheesecake with raspberry consomme and thyme. This was a little bit too much like cheese jelly, if that makes sense, and the consomme was a really great presentation, but it didn't really eat well with the cheese itself. The carrot cake tasted exactly as you would expect it to taste based on seeing it here. It had a twang of bitter citrus from some grapefruit, which was nice. Speaking of grapefruit, a frozen lemon mousse here with vanilla angel food cake and grapefruit. Really refreshing. Citrus desserts are just great in the winter. Last up, a milk chocolate pot de creme served with cookies on the side. It is absolutely a tastier bite when you spread one on the other as opposed to eating the pot de creme by itself. Just the right amount of classic technique, really hospitable service, and a killer wine list puts Grand Cafe on my new list of go-to spots whenever I visit Minneapolis. Our total came to $229.49. We tacked on a $42 tip on top of that. Where should I go out to eat next? Thanks so much for watching. My name is Justin Kana, and I hope you have a good one.